Mpumalelo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Now, it is almost a, a very trendy concept, um, the idea of being conscious of where your food comes from and the idea now of supporting small farmers. But really, it's, it's more than a trend for you, it's your work. Yeah, it's something that I do on a on, on, on daily basis. Um, I work you know, with smallholder farmers um, in the Eastern Cape to create an alternative value chain for meat that comes from animals that are raised out of the fat. I'm, I'm not sure whether you know that you know, uh, beef in South Africa is a 1.67 billion rand industry. 95% uh, of our beef comes from feedlot. 5% you know, is uh, produced by smallholder farmers and the farmers and the white commercial farmers who actually farm on grass. Smallholder farmers and communal farmers in South Africa, they hold 47% of the national head. And our national head is 14.2 million animals. 47%, and yet they produce only 5% of our meat. So there's a problem. And the problem is simply this. This country has got around 35 uh, breeds of cattle and nine are indigenous uh, to this continent and to this country. If you farm with indigenous cattle, you know, except the bone smart, of course, and the tool, um, you, you get penalized because those animals, they produce small frame um, calves and they tend to move when you fatten them much faster. So smallholder farmers get penalized between a rand and six rand per kilogram in terms of what they produce, and that's meat. We do the same thing with vegetables. People talk about sustainable supply chains, and then you ask, what does that mean? Because if you don't first, you have a problem, and the problem simply that the gap between the person who consumes the food and the f person who actually produces the food is just too wide. There are a lot of people in between. And unless you surface everybody on that supply chain, you've got a problem. And the problem is that you grow a carrot in Limbobo, and that carrot could go to your neighbor if you were looking for internal value within a community. But it doesn't. It goes to the market. So somebody comes in and actually take that carrot that you grow into a supermarket. But without necessarily surfacing what happens in the value chain. Because in that supply chain, there are a lot of people, you know, in the middle, you know, who increases the, food, the price of that carrot. So that's a problem. Mm. Now, before we go any further, you've explained so many concepts today, but for the person who doesn't quite understand what a feedlot is, when you refer to how 95% of our beef is from a feedlot, what, what is a feedlot? Well, a, a feedlot is basically a, a confined uh, facility where the feedlot owners, you know, they go out on the market, you know, every year and they buy calves, from farmers who are what, what is called you know, cow-calf producers, which means these are farmers who have got cattle and the cattle are cows. They make them to a bull and they produce cows. And when those cows are six to eight months, they are put on the market you know, in an auction. And um, feedlot owners go there, they buy the calves, and they put them through a system called backgrounding. You know, um, uh, a cow is a, cattle are supposed to eat grass. They're not supposed to eat anything else. They're supposed to be eat grass. But in the 1940s, after the war, um, there was surplus maize in the US. So somebody who's a genius out of the state of Iowa decided that actually we can actually mill the surplus maize and feed it, you know, to cattle. And in that way, we can fatten the cattle much, much faster than grass can. And we shorten the time you know, that these animals you know, need to grow. 
So feedlot system basically, you buy the six to eight months old calves, you put them in confined pens, you feed them a ration, which is called a hot ration, you know, which is a mixture of all sorts of things, um, but mainly it's maize and it's um, basically provide the animal with the feed that they need to grow. But there's a problem, you know, because you, in fact, there are problems because one, you have an animal that is not designed to eat maize. A cow has got four stomachs, and one of them is a rumen, and a rumen is designed to process cellulose and grass into meat. Now you changing that system. You're putting in maize. When you put in maize, maize makes the stomach of a cow acidic. Inside the rumen of a cow, there are microbes, and those microbes are designed specifically to break cellulose and grass into meat. Now you're putting maize into those microbes. Then there's a problem immediately. Stomach of the animal becomes hot, and when the stomach of the animal becomes hot, the microbes in the rumen, they end up in the bloodstream. Anything that is in the bloodstream, it ends up in the liver. And if you go and you look at some of these places, you find livers have got abscesses. And the reason they've got abscesses is because you're feeding maize, and the maize causes the acidic, I mean the stomach to be acidic, and those microbes escape. So what do the feedlots do? They come up with a plan, you know, they put in uh, antibiotics on, oh, I see. yes, on the maize. That allows the animal to stand and actually eat. But there are two things that the feedlot has got to consider all the time. How to make money out of feeding animals. You can only feed a ruminant like a cow for 200 days, max, you know, on maize. If you pass that, that animal dies standing, and that's the truth. So if you feed antibiotics, you've got to calculate and know exactly the time frame in which you want to pull that animal out of the feedlot and actually slaughter. So normally it's around 120 days. Problem with small frame animals, that are something called boss indicus, which means they're indigenous here. Yeah. Those animals, if you feed them, if you feed them guni steer, that nguni steer is going to begin to make to put fat at 60 days. Feedlots and pig cannot make money in 60 days. They've got to feed that animal for 120 days in order to make money. So at 60 days, it's beginning to, to put fat. Even the European breeds, they do exactly the same thing. After 100 days, they begin to put in fat. So what do we do? We go to the market again. We buy things like Zilmax, like Optaflex, and these things, um, what they basically do, when you put them into the feed, they fold the body of an animal into thinking that this animal is still growing. So this animal, the body of this animal thinks the animal is still growing, so it puts in muscle. So you slow the fat production you know, um, on the meat. And when you do that, that animal can put you know, between 25 and 30 pounds weight you know, just on basic ration. But there's a problem. The problem is what the, the feedlots are trying hard to stop. Stop animals that are eating maize from producing fat. Because when you do that, maize produces white fat. When you feed maize to an animal, it's going to produce white fat. White fat is a big problem for you and me. It clogs your heart, you know, it's basically toxic to have fat, white fat on your meat. Right? You suppose they have yellow fat because the yellow fat is derived, the, the yellow part is derived mainly from the beta carotene of the grass and all the other stuff that the animals eat. So when you feed these animals, we end up with a big problem. So we do feed lots slaughter because they uh, integrated value uh, creating companies and they are vertically integrated. So when they do uh, when they slaughter their animals, they actually trim the fat. But the fat doesn't just disappear because to make money out of beef, you have to consider they're selling the whole animal, every bit of the animal, including the fat. 
So where does the fat end up? It ends up on all the other things that we create on the side, the sausage, the mince. You know, we're supposed to have 80-20, uh, which, which means it's 80% real beef on your sausage and 20% fat. But we don't. We end up with, I've seen sausages that are 50-50. You know, basically we take the, the, the fat and we put it into um, our sausage and our mince. And that's why we have a fat nation. Yeah. 